that dreaded reach for the mouse. Sometimes it just feels like it breaks your flow. Well, today's video is all about staying in the flow, working smarter and faster with some useful shortcuts in Excel. Let's take a look. Flash fill. If we have text within a distinct pattern, we can use flash fill to separate the portions that we're interested in. If we're interested in extracting the product color, all we need to do is type the first color which matches the entry within our data set. In the cell below, we can then use the shortcut control E to activate flash fill. We can see that the command recognizes the pattern throughout the data set and extracts all of the colors for every data set entry. If we want the product, we can just type the first product name again and then press Ctrl E. We can do the same for size. Type the size that matches the first dataset entry and then press Ctrl E. Flash fill is great at separating text, but it's also good at doing the opposite. If we want to combine the first and last names of our employee list, we just need to type the completed first name. Then in the cell below, press Ctrl E and Flash Fill will take care of the rest. If we wanted to create email addresses for these employee names, we could also do that with Flash Fill. If we write the first name and then separate the first name and the second name with a full stop and then add the email address on the end, Flash Fill will be able to recognize the pattern and complete the remainder of the series. Moving around a large data set. We can quickly move around a data set by using a combination of the control key and the arrow keys. If we wanted to move to the very right of our data set, we hold the control key and press the right arrow. Then if we wanted to move to the bottom of our data set, we hold the control key and press the down arrow. To go to the left, control left and go to the top, control up. Selecting a data set. If you want to select the entire first row of a data set, hold Control Shift and then press the right arrow. You can then select the remainder of the data set by holding Control Shift and pressing the down arrow. You can also select an entire data set in one action by selecting anywhere in the data set and then using the shortcut Control A. If you want to select all cells on the current worksheet, press Ctrl AA. Filtering. We can apply a filter to a data set using the shortcut Ctrl Shift L. When your active cell is located on a cell which contains a filter, you can press Alt and Down to open that filter. We can use the down arrows to move to the filter options and then use the spacebar to change the current selection. Once you're ready to confirm the filter, just press the Enter key. You can remove a filter from the active data set with the same shortcut we use to apply it, Control shift l You can also filter a data set based on a cell value. Let's say we wanted to check all of the sales that occurred in London. Once our active cell contains the location London, we press shift f 10 and this opens up the right-click menu. Then we can go ahead and press EV to filter by the cell value. Again, you can remove the filter using the shortcut Control shift l Remove all borders. If you would like to remove all of the borders within your current data set, you can press the shortcut Control a to select the entire data set and then use Control shift minus to remove all of the borders. Creating a table. If you would like to convert your data set to a table, Make sure our active cell is anywhere within the data set and then simply use Control T. You can see Excel automatically recognizes the range of data which we're trying to convert to a table. All we need to do is click OK to confirm. You'll see a new tab appears called the Table Design tab. From here, we can make adjustments to the table. We have a styles group where we can change any of the table colors. We also have various checkboxes within the options group. We could add a total row, for example, and you can see Excel recognizes where the numerical values are within the table and gives us the total. 
You can also remove the banded rows from this group if you don't like the colour so much. Within the tools group, we can even load this table directly to a pivot table, or we can convert it back to a range using convert to range. Auto sum shortcut. When we want to find out the totals for each row and each column of our data set, we can select that data set along with one additional row and one additional column, and then use the shortcut Alt equals. This is the same as making our selection and then navigating to the auto sum command within the editing group of our home tab. You can use this shortcut across multiple data sets at once too. We follow the same steps as a single data set. We select our entire data set along with one additional row and one additional column. To select an additional data set, hold down the control key and then again make your selection. Now we can go ahead and press the shortcut Alt equals again. We can see within each row and each column there has been a sum function automatically inserted and the range of numerical values it's trying to sum are correctly identified. Paste values. The information in each of these cells is formula at the moment. So when we use Control C and Control V to copy, Excel is copying and then pasting the formula rather than the cell's value. If we want to paste values only, then we can use Control C to copy and then use the shortcut Control Alt V V. This accesses the Paste Special dialog box and selects values as the paste option. From here, all we need to do is press Enter we can see that this is only the values rather than the formula and formats that was pasted. Date and number formatting. We have some dates here that appear to be formatted as numbers. To transform these back into dates, we just need to make our selection and then use the shortcut Control shift 3 If we would like to convert numerical values which are formatted as numbers into currency format, we can use the shortcut Control shift 4 From here, we can decrease the decimal place within the number group on the Home tab if we would like to simply see rounded whole numbers. To convert data into a percentage format, we can use Control shift 5 Timestamps To insert the current date into an active cell, we can use the shortcut Control semicolon to insert the current time, we can use Control shift semicolon. If we would like to see both the current date and the current time within the same cell, we can first use Control semicolon, then add a space, and then use Control shift semicolon. Default chart. The next shortcut is very fast, but it's very fun. With our dataset selected, we can press Alt F1 to insert a default chart into our worksheet based on the dataset. Visible cells. When we're dealing with datasets that have hidden rows, trying to copy and paste information from that dataset can be challenging. Right now, the dataset is showing all of the results from the medium sized products that were sold. All other dataset entries are contained within hidden rows. If I'd like just to copy these three results to another location within my spreadsheet, once I copy and paste, Excel is considering all of the hidden rows also. If we want to select visible cells only, then when our dataset is selected, we can use the shortcut Alt semicolon. You will notice the display changes a little bit and there appears to be breaks within the active selection. This is when you know only the visible cells are selected. Now when we copy and paste this information using Control C and then Control V, only the three dataset results for our medium sized products are contained within the output. Selecting rows and columns, inserting rows and columns. To select the active column, we can use the shortcut Control and the spacebar. If we would like to select the active row, we can press Shift and the spacebar. With an entire row selected, you can use the shortcut Control Shift Plus to insert a new row. Repeating the last action. If you would like to repeat any last action which you've just taken within Excel, all you need to do is press the F4 key.
In our last example, we inserted a row. So now any time I select a row and press F4, you can see that a new row gets added and Excel keeps repeating the last action every time I press the F4 key. Removing all blank rows. If you would like to remove a blank row, once that row is selected, simply press Ctrl minus. If you would like to remove all blank rows in one action, then you can use the shortcut Ctrl G to launch the Go To Special menu. From here, we can select Special. You will notice that there's an option to select blanks. If we choose this option and then press OK, you will notice that all of the blank rows within the worksheet appear to have been selected. From here, we can press Ctrl minus, then we can tell Excel to shift the cells up and once we confirm, all of the blank rows have been removed in one action. That brings us to the end of what I hope were some useful shortcuts for you to use in Excel. There was a lot here and I wouldn't recommend trying to implement all of these at once in your day-to-day -day use of Excel. Try picking two or three you think will be really relevant for you and next time you find yourself reaching for that mouse, you will know what to do. I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a like and hit that subscribe button. And as always, have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next time.